right, in our last lesson, we were talking about when you have two terms, which is called a binomial, if you take a binomial times a binomial, you'll get something that has three terms, which is a trinomial. And the method that we used to do that was called the FOIL method. It just gave us a way of making sure that we multiplied each of our pieces. Now we wanna do the exact opposite of that. We want to take that trinomial that we created and we wanna factor it back down to the two binomials that it came from. So basically we're doing the inverse process of what we were doing in our last lesson. Now, anytime you're factoring, the very first thing that you want to do is take out your greatest common factor, the largest thing that each of your terms has in common. So for this first one, our two terms are two X and six. The largest thing they have in common is a two. So I'm gonna factor out that two. And what I would be left with is X minus three. And remember the way you find this other factor is you just take each of your terms and divide it by what your greatest common factor was, what you factored out. So two X divided by two leaves me X and negative six divided by two leaves me negative three. All right, look at the next one. The next one has three terms, so it's a trinomial. And if I look at what every one of those terms have in common, each of them has an X. And so if I factor out that X, what I have left, two X divided by X is two negative x squared divided by x is negative x and 6x cubed divided by x is 6x squared. All right, look at the next one, two terms, so it's a binomial. So what is the largest thing that they have in common? 2x. So I'm gonna factor out a 2x, so 2x divided by 2x would be one, then negative 4x squared divided by 2x would be a negative 2x. All right, so once I know how to take out my greatest common factor, the second thing I want to do is see how many terms I have. Because if I have two terms, or if I have three terms, or if I have four terms, that's what's going to determine my next step. All right, so let's start with two terms. If I have two terms, it could be a difference of squares, it could be a difference of cubes, or it could be a sum of cubes. There is no such thing as a sum of squares. All right, so let's look at the formulas. For a difference of squares, it's a squared minus b squared. So two perfect squares being subtracted, and that factors down to a plus b times a minus b. So for instance, let's say that you had four x squared minus nine. You can see that both of those are perfect squares. We could rewrite the four um, x squared to be two x squared and we could rewrite the nine to be three squared. All right, so if we take our first term, two X, plus our second term, three, and then our first term, two X, minus our second term, three, that's how we would factor that down to a difference of squares. So two X plus three, two X minus three. If it's a difference of cubes, that means that our first term is a perfect cube. So like eight X cubed could be rewritten as two X cubed. And our last term is also a perfect cube. So one cubed is one. So you can see in our formula, we're gonna put two X in the place of A and we're gonna put one in the place of B. So let's do that. Let's put two X in for every A. So two X in for A. This was A squared, so that would be two X squared and then two X in for A. Then B is one, so let's go back and let's put in one for every B value. So you can see one in for B, one in for B, one in for B. So if we simplify that, we're gonna have two X minus one for our first term. Two X squared would give us four X squared. Two X times one would be two X and one squared is one. So that would be four X squared plus two X plus one. Now, if that original problem had been eight X cubed plus one instead, the only thing that's gonna change, if you compare the difference of cubes formula with the sum of cubes formula, you'll notice the only thing that changes are the signs. And an easy way to remember those signs is by using SOAP. SOAP stands for same, opposite, always positive. Same, opposite, always positive. And here's what we mean. 
This first sign right here will be the same as this one. So same, this will be the opposite, and this will always be positive. All right, look at this down here. So the first sign is gonna be the same addition, and then opposite subtraction, and then always positive. So if I were to factor this sum of cubes, I'm gonna get the exact same thing, 2x, 1, 2x, 1. 4x squared, 2x, 1, 4x squared, 2x, 1. The only thing that's gonna change are just the signs. So since this was addition, it's gonna be same, opposite, always positive. So if you take out your greatest common factor and you have two terms, the only way that you could factor this down any further is if it were a difference of squares, a difference of cubes, or a sum of cubes. If it's not one of those three things, you're done. It won't factor any further. In our next video, we're gonna look at the following two scenarios. What if you have four terms, and what if you have three terms?